Hi, everybody. It's Mallory from Clicked, and we are going to get started on our business process mapping uh, feedback session soon. So nice to see you all again, too. Nice to see you, Jigna. Nice to see you, Ryan. Hello, everybody. Um, drop your name in the chat. It would be lovely to say hello. And we're going to get started as soon as possible. So it looks like, yep, we've got a raised hand. That is great. Let's um, get a few more raised hands up here. Okay. Okay, let's see if we've got some more people. Great, we got 19 people in the session. I think that leaves um, time for a few more people to join, but that is a good number. So welcome everyone. Once again, uh, if you were here last time at the user stories feedback session, you can all raise your hand and I will bring you up on the stage and you're going to share your screen to show me the business process mapping. Our business process maps are supposed to be a snapshot of the current situation uh, at our business. And then that's part one, showing that current snapshot. And part two is talking about the pain points you're going to solve. You don't have to go into too much detail. Just identifying those would be enough. So just uh, keep that in mind. So with uh, I will only you'll only have a minute to do the map, a minute to talk about the pain points and I can give feedback. Uh, to share your screen down at the bottom of the screen you're looking at right now. Uh, once I bring you up on stage, there will be a square with an arrow in it that you can use to share your screen. All right. When you come up on stage, please introduce yourself so that I can hear how your name is pronounced and tell me what team you're from. All right. Good morning. Um, I'm just going to turn on my camera. Hello. Uh, hey, my name is Janaya and I am part of Sushi Pizza Ramen. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and I will right. just go ahead and share my screen. Awesome. So we created a business process map um, for Splash Services. And so I'm going to walk you through what happens as soon as a customer submits uh, an inquiry. So, and is the screen too tiny? Let me see. Perhaps um, zoom in just, it's nice to see this bird's eye view, but then I'm all right with you like, yeah, doing that. Yeah, that's great. Okay, that's great. sorry, so let me just, oh, that's a bit, too, okay, let's do that. Is that okay? Yes, that's lovely. Awesome. So what happens is step one is a customer contacts um, Splash and it will either, the inquiry will either come through email, a contact us form through the website or a phone call. Then what happens is we have a decision. Is the customer an existing customer or are they a new customer? But in the existing system, it doesn't really matter. It all goes into a central inbox. Um, yeah, it's into a central inbox. Then what happens next is that Lisa needs to go through the in emails in the inbox and she needs to sort through everything. Once she's sorted it out, she then uh, assigns it to her various um, team members. So we know that there are five different groups. There's the group that does lifeguard certification, pool maintenance, like the consultants, the software inquiries. And then as well, we have the last group, which is um, swim schools and community um, pools. So she looks through all of these and then she manually has to kind of like forward and try and figure out who does what. The next thing we know is that they do have an FAQ library of reference. And so it is available to them if they want it. And it's kind of just like hanging around here in case they need it. If they don't, they don't. What happens next is we find that we look to see is the case resolved. If it is resolved, if the um, if the reps are able to resolve it immediately, what happens is the customer receives a solution, and then I'm assuming. So this is I had to <laughs> I, I I made a guess here that the reference point is updated and the reference point is the email, and I said they tag the email as closed. Not ideal. But that's what they do. But if the case is not resolved, then it is forwarded to Lisa, escalated to Lisa by forwarding an email. Again, not very convenient, but it works for them. Lisa looks into it and then it is res re resolved and then it goes through the same path. So, and then I have a little um, 
legend over here um, to explain the different colors. Yeah, that's great. Let's go ahead and talk about the pain points. Go ahead and move on to those. Oh, most definitely. So, okay. So in terms of pain points, uh, so I'm just going to zoom in. Um, so I said the pain points are sorting through the emails and having to manually assign them. Um, and then not having a um, having a different process for new versus existing customers and not knowing when a case is resolved. So again, if we look at the image here, very tiny, but yeah, so we have several pain points. So not here. So we, for example, we, if a customer is an existing customer, it would be nice to know um, if they're existing and maybe have a different process for them saying, hi again, Mr. Smith or whatever. <laughs> As opposed yeah. to, right, as opposed to a new one who's saying, welcome to Splash Services. We're so happy that you've joined us. So that is one of the pain points. But I think the biggest pain point is this part where Lisa literally has to go through an inbox and figure out every single piece and then assign it to her different teammates. And then also a definite pain point is this part where should, um, to close a case, you have to respond to an email to say case closed and then tag it with a tag that says case closed. And then what happens next? We don't know. So those are <laughs> right. our points. <laughs> This uh, so first of all, yeah. The, thank you so much. Great job, great job, uh, team. Um, sushi pizza ramen. This is beautiful. The legend is there. The color coding is there. It is a consistent. It makes sense. It is you know it's high level enough while including some detail. Love that. I have one small piece of feedback here. <laughs> When you have those decision elements, so right now you have that existing customer decision element, but like the same thing happens no matter what. Uh, go a little bit to the right where we have the um, one? yeah case uh, case result. Yeah, go ahead and zoom in there. So this is very nitpicky, hmm. but technically you would ask case resolved. No, the case would be forwarded to Lisa. And then that would loop back into, we would ask again, is the case resolved? I see. Does that make sense? It does. And honestly, um, that might, that might be a little tricky to do in Miro. You might have to use like a manual arrow or something. I don't know. Mm. But just keep that in mind. Once again, very, very picky feedback. Beautiful oh, job. Cool. Like, you know, um, this wasn't supposed to be like completely, you know, 100%. This is, you know, this isn't like some diagram that someone's going to look at to build the solution. It's a map of the process. So just a little feedback there. Um and then feel free, so this isn't necessarily a critique, but on this type of assignment uh, where we have you like map the process and then put the pain points, feel free to use like one of the post-it notes in Miro or oh. you know, just a little something in Lucidchart on, on any on any uh, platform to, to pop that there, you know, or maybe in your presentation, you have the map and you have those post-it notes ready to show, mm -hmm. Oops, here's a pain point here, ah. here. So that while you have the list down there and that's yeah. great and you could show it to me, it's sort of, you know, mm -hmm. could, could be helpful. But this is, this is really very, very lovely team sushi pizza ramen. Like really, really <laughs> great. Um, and you know, even though we may not see these processes in the final presentation, I don't, you know, you may or may not choose to include this, you know, map in the talking about your solution. This would have been extremely useful to your team while developing. So just really wonderful work. Really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for the feedback. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Wonderful job. All right. Next up here. Hi. Hello. Okay. I'm Sujata. Sujata? Yeah, the Sujata from uh, Pasta Rajma. Pasta Rajma. All right. I'm keeping yeah. track, making sure I get uh, somebody from each team. So thank you for that. Yeah. So um, you can see the screen, right? Yes, we can. Okay, so um, this, the the process starts with the customer service agents receiving the case either through web, phone, or email. 
and you have the other five departments which also receive their information uh, request by either by phone or email and each uh, each of their request um, it goes through a separate uh, process like each line of business assigns it to their agents according to to their expertise right mm-hmm. and then they work on it and if there's a delay it, then it's escalated to the senior t- team member and if it's resolved the customer reviews the case and if it's resolved it goes uh, i mean its case is closed if not it goes back to assign to the support agents um and uh, there is another sub routine the uh, support agents also look up the uh, library of reference documents which is on individual um, sorry uh, there's fire alarm testing is that That's okay go on we can hear you just fine okay so the library reference documents are on each laptops right so individually they look up and then the customer if it is uh, done they send it to the customer and the customer says okay i'm okay with it that the case is closed if not it goes back to the custom support uh, agents so um the manager and when when the case, case is closed the customer fills the feedback form which is not uh, there uh, everybody gets it it's manual some some cases it, uh, some of them get it customers others don't get it so um the here the manager she has a site of on of this the customer agents she doesn't know um, this pro- what is happening here so my the pain points are uh, the the all the different uh, lines of business get their own request sometimes and it's not all of them uh, are together in one place so she is not able to see all of the information if uh, all of them are together she can, all the data will be consolidated in one place so that's one pain point and um, the the other one will be she also doesn't see the uh, individual processes because again it's all separate right so um in case if she has the um view of everything she can analyze and see where they are and uh, and she can also help in better customer service and um here uh, the other pain point is like the each one of them of them have their individual uh, information the laptops if it is centralized then they can all, they can all update and they can get the uh, recent uh, the most updated information and uh, the customer feedback form here it's manual so uh, once it, like once the case is closed if all of them are on the same place then uh, they can be sent um, automatically uh, once the case is closed Sim- similarly they can also send um, that acknowledgement email once it is receive when everything is in one place. Well, this looks great. Let me go ahead and give some feedback. Once again, everybody, you know, send some claps uh to team Pasta Rajma. Really wonderful. I just want to call out before I give some feedback here. This map looks different, you know, from Sushi Pizza Ramen's, you know, map, but yeah. they are both great. You know, Sushi Pizza Ramen chose to call out like the different queues where and and you all have like the web phone email, you know, differently, but they're both very valid. So I just want to point that out that the two different um formats are are very valid. Um, I'm going to mute you for a second, Sujatha. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Um hopefully you, if you uh you can unmute yourself um when that stops and ask any questions but i think so i am not seeing any like glaring oh make sure that this decision you know element like needs to loop back with your case result i think you've well yeah cuz you've got the arrows i think that's all good <clears throat> it's a little hard to get super granular so quickly but this is wonderful once again just for this particular context you all could add in something like uh you know, a little call out for the pain points when you're presenting like to a client about this or something. But honestly, I, I don't have much else to say. You all have done a really beautiful job. Thank you so much. All right. Next up. Just a reminder for anybody who's come in like later, uh, come up, say your name, say the team you're from and share your screen and let's get started. We are, I'm, I'm going to make things go a little bit faster. We're running out of time. So, um, 
Hello. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi. Yeah. Hi. So I'm Jigna Katri from Team Tap and Curry Kahos Baha. We have put um, we have kept a short form of our team T C C C B team. And uh, I can see that. Uh, oh yeah, it's here. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Not yet, but give it, sometimes it takes it. There we go, there we go, all right, oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay so okay. let's go through these pretty quickly and uh, just pop the pain points in there. Uh, looking good though, really good. So, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, uh, here it starts from the customer initiated contact through contact as form and it went to the central inbox and then uh, it is assigned to the agent. We have put here a delay box uh, to uh, like uh, to reflect the issue because you know for the like uh, to assign the report like uh, to assign the agent uh, there is delay on agent assignment because email to the center box needs to be manually reviewed and sorted and then it went to the response to customer within one business day because as a customer service manager, John would like to all query to the answer within one business day, but he doesn't know if this goal is being met. Uh, and then here it's a decision element. Uh, so if a customer responds yes, then uh, case is closed and the weekly report is created. But if uh, uh, issue is not resolved, customer response no, then again, uh, uh, like uh, it went to update the status on the case. And again, it uh, goes uh, like uh, here again, one more decision element. Should this case be escalated? If yes, then uh, again, uh, it's a process like review cases. And uh, while we're reviewing cases, one more decision element we have put here. Like, should this be escalated to partner? If yes, then uh, send update to customer and escalate to partner. If uh, I, if this case is, uh, if this should not escalate to partner, then reach out to customer to share status update and get more information. And uh, uh, again here, I, if this case, is not escalated then uh, uh, again the same process we have to do like customer working on the continue working on the case and send update to the customer and uh, because it's a agile environment and it's an iterative process so again we have to go uh, with the same process again here like if a customer responds yes then case is closed and if customer responds no, then we have to go again the same process, like update the status on the case. And then we have to put the decision element, like so this case is escalated or not. And um, uh, here also at the end, after case is closed, we have put uh, the delay box here, weekly report is created uh, because sometimes uh, like uh, it takes a week for a report to be manually created. So, uh, so, so like as a customer service manager, Mr. John has limited visibility on important metrics. And uh, he, like uh, Mr. John also doesn't have uh, daily visibility on the progression of cases since uh, everything is manually processed. So this is our business mapping chart. And um, uh, I have a different, uh, slide for uh, customer pain point. So can I go and say that? Yeah, you know, can you just read off the slide and leave this map up for now, just for a time's sake? Okay. Is that all right? Or um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you just want me to uh, read the pain point verbally, right? Sure. And you can just point with your mouse where they go in the in the map. Okay. Uh, so uh, first we have a uh, customer pain point. First one is that customer may not have the query dealt with in timely manner uh, because sometimes it takes uh, too much time to uh, answer the question, uh, like answer the query of all the customer. 
and then there's no immediate customer support on the uh, emergency uh, maybe uh, here uh, uh, because uh, you know like when we assign the cases to the agent sometimes it takes uh, too much time to uh, you know like uh, 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 to uh, i mean it takes too much time uh, uh, to uh, circulate the uh, you know uh, the uh, i mean right process to the agent and uh, uh, one more thing uh, like uh, customers like customer feel that you know uh, they don't uh, visible like what is the status of their case so you know like they feel that uh, they don't know if any resolution is being uh, handled or not lovely yeah. yeah so this all looks really great i love that we're seeing yet another format of the of the process map and um your team has the swim lanes so what that does is it lets us see you know who where this is you know who's got responsibility for what um one uh so this is really wonderful great job great job mapping out the process great job talking about the pain points so just overall very positive i do want to say so my one little picky piece, piece of feedback for you all is this respond to customer within one business day that would not i would not classify that as a delay that is a process okay, okay. So that's my only, once again, really picky thing. You have it with the support team. That's their, you know, that's their, uh, uh, their, their deal and everything. But in fact, the assign to an agent and the respond to the customer, those are both processes, not so much delays. Um, now the weekly report, if that truly is showing like it takes this chunk of time to, to put together for the data to, you know, be put together by the system or something, that's a delay. Um, but those two things technically, you know, that's just a process. Now it does take time and I see, like I can see the thought, you know, behind that for sure, but that's my only real picky thing and great job pointing out those, um, those pain points. So once again, uh, great, great job um, from another team. So thank you so much. Thank, you. And team thank you so much. PCCB. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. Next up and just get right on here and share your screen and introduce yourself. Hello. Hi, I'm Jana and I'm just going to share my window. Uh, I'm teen veggie in my tummy. Veggie in my tummy. Yeah. I had eggplant Parmesan last night for dinner. So <laughs> That's great. I did that. No, you know. <laughs> All right. Hi, Go so ahead. Hero, um, okay. Actually, really nice tool, by the way. Um, so we start with a case in the main email, and then we have Lisa manually sort all the emails. We ask ourselves, I mean, she asks what kind of query it is, and we um, send it to the right team. So if it's a pool management service, lifeguard, software, and general query, we send the emails to the specific people. In this case, we just made up some names. Um, in the pool management, I know they have two different kind of um, query. So we have the maintaining pools or consulting project for new pools. Send emails to the, the right team, people here. At the bottom we have, is it a current client? So if it's not a current client, we have to create an account, a contact and a case and then you will go into this another loop here, but I'll just talk about it in a minute. Yeah. Um, so it is a current client. Yes. Is it a new case? If it's go, yes. Is, does he have a, has, has been a similar case been resolved in the past? So then the team look at the PDF library and hopefully they will resolve the issue. If it's not, they still have to try to come up with some idea and resolve the issue. <laughs> And um, if it's not a new case, we have to follow up with the team or look at the notes and then answer the client. And that hopefully will close the case, but um, we still don't know how that's gonna happen. So we didn't really have kind of an idea how the case is closed, how we track that. I think Great. it's more of the pain point actually as well. Lovely. And our pain points is all the manual sort email, put a post-it here. So all of this, um, that's pretty painful for Lisa to get all the emails and read each of them. 
Uh, another, another pain point is create a new contact. So if this could be done automatically, it would be great instead of uh, the team filling up again from contact us from the email and then made a new contact. And the other one is the follow-up. So if the case it's, um, is not new, we still have to contact or call or email our teammate and see what's going on with that case. Great. Well, I'm, I'm going to stop you there because mm -hmm. it looks amazing. Once again, here we are, a different format, still very valid, still really lovely. Um, yeah, give, give Team Veggie in My Tummy some claps. So, you know, you use Miro and your Miro looks different than somebody else's Miro and it's still very valid. Good use of the decision elements. Um, I like how uh, you've got like, okay, you have to create something new and that's green. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's really lovely. Um, so I don't, and the looping, yep, there's going to be loops. It's going to be like, what about this? What about that? I mean, that's like, mm -hmm. that's our job, everybody, you know, uh, so don't be afraid of the loops. The mm -hmm. one thing I'm wondering if you would, you don't necessarily have to do this on this challenge. Um, mm -hmm. But oh, it seems like the other teams did have some area of the map that was dedicated to like case escalation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've got case closed and mm -hmm. I don't think that's necessarily wrong or mm -hmm. you could be like case resolution. Okay. So what if that's case resolution? Mm -hmm. All right. It's over there. That's fine. If your team is you know, maybe you've got two teams or maybe your team's just going to focus on like, you know, one thing at a time and you're only worried about the cues and you're only worried about the, you know, creating the new contact. Mm -hmm. It may be that later on in the project, you need to map out the case. Okay. What if it wasn't resolved? Mm -hmm. You may need to do more mapping on that, like further down the line on your project. Uh, it's possible. So this is just an example of you stayed high level in a certain area and that could be okay. Um, and uh, you could either your stakeholder would be like, wait, we have a bunch of problems with case resolution that need to be like sorted out. You're like, okay, well we can add that. Um, or you're not, you're not dealing with that part of it in this current sprint or something like that. Uh, so you can always get more granular, you know, within mm -hmm. the processes. So I just want to point that out. I think it's great. That's Thank you. Great. That's my feedback. Wonderful job. Wonderful job. Oh, okay. I hope I didn't. Oh, I brought. Okay. Hi, Amber. Okay. Good morning. <laughs> okay. Hi. I'm Amber and I'm with Team Tacos. Awesome. Yum. Clicking share. Is that big enough? Lovely. Yes. And feel free to like, you know, move the screen around if you want to or something. Yeah. Yeah. Look, great, great, great. Okay. So as long as you can read it. Uh, so we have all our inquiries coming up here. Uh, manually go into a folder and then also manually moved to the different experts. All five of those. Uh, they all reach out and look into their PDF knowledge files, which are in their own computer folders. Was it solved? Yes, send a response, case closed. If not, manual, escalate to manager, then close, respond. And then we added our pain points here on the layer two. So it starts here, pretty much where all the manual yeah. examples are. And then uh, like these should be not stored on computers. They should be stored in a general knowledge base for everyone to reach in Salesforce. And then the manual escalation, you know, instead of a, there's two times, you know, like the time delay, if someone isn't solving it and it's like falling through the cracks, or it could also be just, uh, you know, they could do it by themselves instead of readjusting the owners. Okay. And then at the end, they want a follow-up here. Yeah. Yeah. So in the interest of time, first of all, I normally wouldn't maybe do this all the time, but this cohort seems to have a really great handle on what's going on. So I trust your analysis of the process. So first off, I love th this is a big bonus, a big cherry on top of this is that you had that second layer ready and like waiting to pop up for me. OK, so if I am a business stakeholder and I'm looking at this process map, and I'm like, OK, where are the pain points? And then you're just like, now we're going to look at these things and the boom, they pop up. 
love that. Um, that is a little bit of a, that's a level up guys. Okay. So like pay attention. Um, it's something you can do if you're familiar with layers from other graphic design programs, just love it. Uh, I have the same itsy bitsy call out for you when the case is not closed. Is it the manual escalation? You're going to have to ask again if it's closed. You're going to, okay. So you can't assume that the manual escalation okay. Here. closes yeah. it. Once again, really nitpicky. If, if a, if a business said, well, like, yes, a hundred percent of the time after it's manually escalated, it's closed. Yes. Different story, I guess, you know, um, but technically you'd want to like ask again. Does that make sense where I'm coming from there? So that's really super duper nitpicky there. I love how you had those arrows pop back up um, and how you had the pain points go and yeah, give them some more claps. Great job. Great job. We also have a tab over here that has like the explanation. On a, oh, on yes. Page. Okay. So that is good. That is good. I do want to say, you know, the key, the keys are good. Um, however, all of you, every team that has presented, it's like the colors were different enough that I, I, I think even as sort of a civilian, you know, you could be like, okay, well, it's like different stuff's going on. And you could present that, like, if you had more time, of course, <laughs> you know, if you weren't uh, limited to two minutes, but yeah, I, uh, honestly, you, everybody's just been doing a great job. I'm super impressed. Thank you, Amber, uh, so much. Thank you. Okay. Hey, good morning. Morning. Good morning. This is Miriam uh, from Pita Wars team. Awesome. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> Your Pita Wars. Okay, so I do. I haven't had anybody yet from Sushi Doza, Chicken Biryani, Caramel Blazers, or Mo Cilantro. I know we've got people waiting, but I just wanted to. Throwing that out there. All right, can, go ahead, Miriam. Can you can you see my screen? Got it. Yes. Perfect. So today we selected a deployment flowchart. Um, this type of process map is primarily used for stakeholders, as it furnishes them with information on how processes work. And most stakeholders are hardly interested in processes and may not possess any requirements to know the elaborate or detailed process steps. What will be covered in this type of map is the major process steps. Lovely. So first of all, the customer submits the query. Then the service starts. The splash will receive the query. Then the service agent will manually analyze it and distribute and will after respond. So many agents will respond after. So it's either the case will be escalated and will go directly to John Cervantes and it's going to be a big mess or it's going to be <laughs> or it's <Love> the, it. <laughs> the agent's um, response and the, um, I mean, many cases will be lost in between and the case will be resol resolved or closed and it will be lost in limbo. Um, the pain points in the experience are the frustrating time consuming manual process and the agents waste time maybe composing email responses. The easy step would say that it's the query submission. This is the easy step for our Pita Wars splash issues diagram. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, so first of all, great job, Team Peter Wars. Awesome. Thank you so with, much. with like the swim lanes and the emoji in there. Uh, <laughs> you, so this is this is a boundary I love to push all the time and maybe not everybody wants to or maybe not everyone would recommend it. But I really try to build a rapport with my clients. And, you know, if that kind of thing will fly and they seem comfortable with it, it can be just a great way to build trust. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So not everybody's okay <laughs> with it. You. I don't know if you're working the federal bank or something, I, you know, <laughs> maybe don't do it. Uh, but 
absolutely. I think for this scale of business, like this isn't, you know, a global business, the the pool business, like this could definitely be appropriate. Um, I do think, I wonder if this diagram is a tad high level. I would maybe put a little bit more detail into the query, the nature of the query, okay. things like that. It's not okay. a bad starting place at all. You all understand uh, how the business works, but mm -hmm. um, perhaps if during the rest of your work with your team, you need something more detailed, you can mm -hmm. work on it just a little more, but it, it is a very nice snapshot of the business. Thank process. you. So yeah, the um, you know, the Bitmoji people are not part of like whatever universal process notation, but I totally think that there's a place for them and the right client. So great job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mallory. Thank great you job, so Miriam and team. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you. All right. Next up. Hey, Mallory, this is Ryan from Mo Cilantro. Mo Cilantro, all right, let's see it. All right. And I think, um, I can't, I don't remember where John is from, but uh, we're going to miss, we're like missing a couple more teams in case anybody wants to raise their hand. Okay, Ryan, go for okay. it. Okay, to start us off here, um, you'll notice at the top, we kind of have the stages representing kind of like our legend from start to finish. And then on the side, we also have our swim lanes representing when the customer comes into play, as well as the team members and the uh, manager itself. So starting off, we have our the inquiry comes in, um, whether it's email, phone, web. Um, from there, we have a decision point, you know, were these inquiries answered? If yes, then we're going to assign it to the department. If no, then we're assuming they're going into a queue for further review later. Um, also, we're assuming that it's potential, there's potential that the issue can be resolved kind of on the spot. And if so, we kind of have that going from, you know, the inquiry all the way to our, um, you know, process complete. Um, that's not always going to be the case. So once it gets assigned to the departments, we have the respective departments anywhere from the lifeguard staffing, pool maintenance, um, and then from there, if it goes through them, we'll have them go through their knowledge articles. Um, other other times, it may be an urgent inquiry, which we have, you know, assume that we're going right to the manager from there. We don't know which department should be handling that. Um, if it is one of the groups handling it, they'll go through the knowledge articles. If they can solve it, um, great. That's, you know, that's the goal. They will, you know, send a feedback form, evaluate the performance and close out the process. If not, that's when we might need to either, you know, call the customer to, you know, get more info to resolve it or escalate to the customer service manager. Um, similar to the other groups, this is an area where, you know, once it gets escalated, you know, we have some room to add, you know, where it goes after that, maybe another decision point. Um, and then as far as pain points, one of our biggest ones we wanted to highlight in is the, uh, these delay areas right here. Um, so when it gets to the email queue or even a voicemail, it's, um, John mentioned there's a lot of frustration sorting through taking the time to figure out who, which group gets this. There's a lot of manual intervention going on. Um, and then from there, we do have a quick little storyboard, um, just high level, you know, start with the customer needs help, they contact all the way through, you know, the case is closed, ticket survey sent. Um, but some more pain points could be, you know, the customer is on hold too long, get in touch with customer service. Um, the customer and the case manager doesn't know, you know, the current progress, you know, where it is, um, you know, also whether or not a case has to be escalated would be another, you know, pain point. All right. This is looking great. Yeah. Get ready to give team Mo Cilantro a hand. Uh, so I, can you scroll back up to your process map here? This is looking great. Love the swim lanes. Love it so much. Um, just because everybody's doing such a great job, we're doing kind of okay on time. I'm going to um, get a little picky here. With the delay node, I think that's a little bit of a confusing one. Um, it's not meant to call out a delay like that's a problem, right? Delay has a very negative connotation. Um, especially in the customer service world, right? Like there was a delay, you know, uh, and I want to say that uh, it's more like with the, in the video I did, when we hit the snooze, it's going to be five minutes. 
you know, versus that. So that might actually be like more of a process. Now you'll call it out as a pain point because it's taking too long, but like calls will be handled a different way than an email. So that is once again, very nitpicky um, about using that particular type of symbol. And then the other really nitpicky thing is after your lifeguard, this, the staff staffing lifeguard is that, sorry. Um, those are a bunch of decision points, like technically with the diamonds. Um, so they should have like yeses and nos, or they need to be just processes or something. Okay. So it's a little like <clears throat> a, a decision point needs to have like, if yes, if no coming out of it, or maybe those actually need to not technically be decisions. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Okay, so yeah, putting branches there. But once again, I, I think you all are showing a really good understanding of the business process. So I just don't want to um, to you know say that you didn't do a good job. I'm getting to be really nitpicky because everybody's doing a wonderful job with their um, with their process maps. I like the I like the storyboard down there. I like some of the other ways of showing it. I would say. If I were presenting, um, I wouldn't want to like um, show too many different things, you know, or, mm -hmm. or or something like that. So just be careful with that, but not a bad way to practice. So thank you okay. so much, Ryan. Thank you. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Next up. Hi, this is Jenna with Sushi Dosa. Sushi Dosa, all right. Yay. All right, I'm about to share my screen. Oh, and I see Uzo, I see you've raised your hand. I think maybe I accidentally pushed the reject button earlier because you had your hand raised earlier. But sometimes, I just want to say, sometimes air meet, the buttons are really close together and I accidentally pushed something. So thank you so much. Okay, Jenna. All right, so this is our... Uh, lucid chart right here. Mm -hmm. uh, so incoming customer request comes in, we get it from phone, email, or they can be uh, from the website contact us form, uh, which um, he, uh, phone and email, uh, they are manually sorted uh, from the website. Uh, they're submitted to the central mailbox, which en ends up being manually so uh, sorted to. Sorry. <laughs> Um, and then it's assigned to subject matter expert. Um, if yes, case is logged. If no, unanswered calls, agents are available. And then calls are returned it, once agents are assigned, once available. Um, and then case logged. And then new customer, create a folder, existing customer, uh, add to existing folder. And then if case is resolved, if yes, case is closed. If no, cases, unresolved cases, uh, access FAQs on shared drive. Um, case escalated to customer support manager. And then case closed. Um, and then we had our pain points right here. Manually routing cases, center email address, Cannot estimate if right number of SMEs are assigned uh, based on incoming traffic, access updating data in spreadsheet PDF, no stage to track cases, no customer feedback. And then one question that we would have is how are open and resolved cases dealt? All right, everybody give them a big hand. This is a really beautiful business process yeah. chart. I want to, uh, can you scroll down to the unanswered calls there where it's like, no, and you've, you've got that delay node there. That is a very good use of that node. I want to point that out because it, like I said, it's a little bit of a confusing thing, but yeah, if that is sort of like a place where things wait, you know, a place where, you know, it's, it's like, well, if it's a queue and it gets answered, it's a little different than like some, you know, black hole inbox. Okay. So uh, having something sit in a black hole is in a process, but having uh, it, so I, I like the use of the delay node there. Maybe someone would disagree with me. Um, so everything else looks good. I think I have the one call out for you. If you scroll down a little bit more, um, with unresolved, uh, case resolved 
that you don't need the delay there. I don't think for the unresolved cases, like it's just a fact of cases that, you know, yes or no, they won't be resolved. And then with the escalation manager, escalation to the customer support manager, I would technically have you pop that then back to the question of, is it resolved? Um, okay. And like what, what, you know, what happens there or, you know, I'm, I'm bringing this up because I think I would ask it, uh, you know, but if you had asked the business, I brought this up with like a few teams. If you had asked the business, you know, what happens? It's like, oh no, once they get to that person, it is resolved. Like there's nowhere else it can go. So I could be wrong um, there, or maybe you got information from the business or something like that, but just heads up, um, you may have loops sometimes in your process modeling. So just don't be afraid of that. Uh, everything else looks great. Uh, just, you know, having those pain points right there uh, so I can see them really wonderful. And yeah, I just, just another round of applause. Great job. Thank you. Thank so much. you. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Uh, hi. Hello. Morning, Did I everybody. accidentally kicked you out earlier? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I noticed it then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, let's see, um, tab. Okay, and is it Uzo? Is that how I pronounce yes, your name? Yes, Uzo. Awesome, and then what team are you from? This is Caramel Blazers, Team 7. All right. Yeah. Okay, your screen's okay. coming up. Here we are. There you go. Hey, go ahead. Uh, so here we have this, um, the process map for Splash pool services. And here is a start. Uh, three different routes, um, ways that queries come in. You have if the customer completes the web form or sends an email to log a query, it goes to a central email. And then is the customer new? Same thing with if the customer makes a phone call. Is it customer new? You get cost you ask them questions about services or they ask us questions about services we offer. Here I had a question I didn't want to assume because it didn't say in the user interview who it's routed to. Okay, so I made that decision. Who do you route it to? Is it a team lead or a dedicated staff member who handles such cases? And if the customer is not new, and it's a maintenance problem. You check the library of reference documents. Does it match a previously solved case? Yes, refer to the documents, close the case and end. No, uh, refer route case to a specialist team member. And if it was solved within one working day, close case and end. If not, escalate case to manager and close case. And then um, I used this to, I know this is for swim lanes, but I used it to answer the questions for the part two, pain points, um, easy steps, and new questions. Uh, pain points, manager doesn't know if and when case has been resolved, cannot see, manager cannot see stages of the query as it evolves and all of that. And then new questions that I had, um, so one, do you have a template for a customer service questionnaire already drawn up? Because in the user interview, it says the, the manager said, Lisa Cervantes says she would like to follow up with a questionnaire. So do you have one already? If not, we will have to drop one. Do you have a way for new customers to indicate which service they are interested in? And how do you deal with cases that come through the phone? Anyway, so that's it from me. Lovely. Yeah. Let me take a look at this real quick. I'm going to zoom in on my computer, Tad. Um, so questions about services we offer. Um, who do you route it to? Team lead? Okay. So it's sort of with that question there, you know, is the customer new? Yes. Um, questions about services we offer. So if the customer is new, you have them 
we don't, you just don't know who they route it to. And then we've got like end there. Right. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So I think, you know, that would be fine, but I have a feeling. Okay. So we just don't know who it's routed to team lead no. or, okay. Um, I, I think that we could assume here that new customers would go through some kind of same process as customers who, are not new, you know, to like route it. Cause that simplifies it a little bit for a new customer, you know, even if they have that. So that's, is the customer new now, if it's questions about services we offer where that decision needs to happen, maybe that, like if that particular subject um, needs to kind of go off on its own, I think it could, but to like, to me, just ask, I would ask some more clarifying questions. If you had the time, you know, if you, if you were, being you know, able to meet with stakeholders. So that's the only part that kind of sticks out. Like I just see, oh, new customers just go on a completely different path. And um, I, I think that that maybe is not the case, but I love uh, how clear this is. I liked your follow-up questions a lot. This is once again, uh, an example of like kind of a different format and some different colors used and still very clear um, explanation of the business process. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Appreciate it. All right. And Ramya. Hi. Uh, um, uh, I'm Ramya from uh, Chicken Biryani team. All right. Um, uh, before sharing, I just want to uh, tell, like, uh, after seeing everyone's uh, business process mapping, uh, I should work more on my uh, flow, but I just want to uh, submit and get the feedback from you. Yes, don't worry about that. Yeah, these were these were kind of, oh, I think it's looking great already. Don't worry about it. <laughs> let's Let's check it out. So, uh, like, uh, once the customer enter into the website, uh, the the they are submitting the query using the contact us form. Uh, once it is submitted, uh, it goes to the central email address, and then the customer support manager uh, will read the email and check uh, the corresponding team if it's uh, related to the life card. It will assign to the team. And same way, you will check for all the uh, like uh, maintenance of pool or consulting project or software issue are uh, related to some swim schools. And then it is assigned to the corresponding team. Uh, after that, the case is resolved. Um, so I just had a brief uh, level here. And the one more um, path is uh, the, the customers are... Uh, uh, entering to the sorry sending email to the uh, corresponding team like uh, pool maintenance or uh, uh, the account billing so they have a separate email for all the departments so they can uh, the customers are uh, sending emails to the particular um, department and then the cases are resolved um, so here yeah, the pain point is uh, reading all the emails manually and uh, uh, assigning it to the uh, uh, separate uh, like corresponding teams. Uh, uh, the, that is one pain point. And um, the customer support manager didn't know when the cases are closed. And uh, also he didn't uh, keep track of the stage details and everything. Um, yeah, this is my... Uh, presentation. Lovely. Really great job. Hey, I, so I really, um, when you said, oh, I think I need to work on my flow. So you got down to like assign the case and the case gets closed, right? Yeah. This is not wrong. Okay. okay. It's yeah. not necessarily incorrect. So once again, yeah, I saw people clapping. Yes. Let's give claps. Definitely. Great job. Um, what I want to point out here is it's not wrong to map it out completely and it's not necessarily wrong to kind of abbreviate that part of the process because it just in different engagements, you may be focused on something else. So what if your big focus is, a, is about the queuing? You know, how do we figure out if it's related to lifeguards or maintenance or a consulting project? Now, 
I know that we do want to get kind of big picture here, but for a deliverable, you know, for, for this challenge here at Clicked, this is great. So just a really wonderful thing. And your all your decision elements um, have the yes and the no and the yes and the no and the yes and the, and the no. Now, I don't know that the data would particularly like flow like that, but that's very, it's very nice to, to see that. So your diamonds all have yeses and nos on them. And that is absolutely great. So, um, I, yeah, I just want to say, you know, even though you see, said, you know, maybe I need a little bit of work. It's, it's not necessarily that it was wrong. It was just granular in a different way or, uh, a little more high level in a different way. And, um, for this, that is all right. If you had the time that you needed, you know, with discovery or even just being able to, you know, have a little bit more time with even like your pre-sales team from your consulting, you know, uh, or uh, team, you would have known we're not even messing with case resolution. So just abbreviate that, you know, or actually case resolutions, they're big, you know, um, issue do dig into that process. You could always have this business map and you could link to a different business map that just dealt with case resolution. You know, um, it's so, so just, yeah, I just want to say really wonderful job there. Uh, really, really great job. And, um, and well, it's kind of what you did when you scroll down, like, and you have that other map there, Yeah, you know, like, it, so it's a different type of map or you could, you know, just, yeah. Anyway, just want to say, I, I think you all did a great job. I think you show understanding of the process and um, yeah, wonderful. I am going to move on to the KPIs dashboard part. We are just about at time. We have four minutes left, but I believe there, let me look in the comments here. Um, if anybody, does anyone have any specific questions? First off, I'm just gonna open up the, the comment section to you. Please write if you have any questions about the KPIs dashboard. Um, I think that there's not a specific feedback section, like session, excuse me, for that. Um, really though, I think what, Jeff and Ashlyn and everybody envisioned for you all is since we don't have like a ton of data, you're going to have to do a bit of a mock-up. And so if you're worried, oh my gosh, I don't have enough stuff. Um, you do have some data in your developer orgs where you can start to build dashboards around like you know, I don't know if we've got customer resolution time or things like that. Um, and you could also just like make one up. <laughs> uh, and you could say, this is what we are going to report on. So this says, <clears throat> but it's, yeah. So I think that they thought you didn't need a specific feedback session. So lean on everything in the LMS. J don't, don't feel afraid if you feel like there is a gap um, yeah. So Kubra says like dummy data. Yeah. I mean, we don't have an actual website where we can like, you know, do all these things. So you, when you're a consultant and you're demoing these things, sometimes it's almost impossible to show like reporting on actual data, or sometimes you have to create data in your development environment to show it. So yeah, you, unless you can, back promote uh, from a higher environment, like a production environment to get that data or something like that, you're not going to have the live data all the time. So I've been on clients where we do have all that data. And I've been on clients where I just had to, you know, when I say make it up, it's like, okay, if you had several data points, they would be displayed as such. So it's not like I'm, I'm making up a result. Okay. I'm not saying, look at this dashboard. I have improved your metrics by this much. All right. So that's not what it is. It's not um, lying or fabricating a result. It's putting in dummy data so that you can show how results might be displayed, i.e. we're going to use a gauge for this, or we're going to show just 
a number that says average wait time. So it's just kind of, that's why we would use dummy data. Um, so let's see, create dummy data in a, so once again, go to the LMS, it's the build service KPIs, build a service KPIs dashboard. If you study for the service cloud uh, consultant exam in Salesforce, KPIs, their names, exactly what they do are a huge part of it. So KPIs are key performance indicators and they are related to different things. So like your customer satisfaction score is related to like how, how happy people are with you. Your net promoter score is how likely someone would be to recommend your business to someone else. Uh, that S that, um, like average close time of a case is another key performance indicator. So keeping that in mind, if you had your net promoter score uh, or your, you know, average, you know, time to close a case or something like, what's the best way to show that? A bar graph, a gauge, a just a big number. You know, if we know that like five out of five stars is our best CSAT score, then just showing like, hey, we're at 4.8, you know, could be um, appropriate and could be a good way to communicate the data. So yeah, you use dummy data, but I guess in case anyone's like, oh no, that's um, cheating or something, uh, it's not about over-promising or misrepresenting the effectiveness of your solution. It's just about showing how that data would be displayed. Uh, any other questions about the KPIs? So it says create, a create dummy data in Google Sheets. Just want to know if the KPI presentation is different from the... No, I don't think so. I think you will get one chance to present. And since we're all here, um, I have... This is the second sprint I've done with Clicked. Um, you are going to have just a very limited amount of time to present. Okay, everybody? Very limited. I would highly recommend practicing your presentation and timing yourself to make sure that you can do it in the time. And then... Think about what you would present to the client. Sorry, everybody. Um, think about what you would present to the client. You've already done a business process map. Like, what are the deliverables? What's like, what do I want? I um, Others may disagree with me, but I almost wouldn't like show necessarily, or I wouldn't, I wouldn't walk through my business process map in the presentation. I would say, here's the business process map that we presented. We found these pain points, make them real short. We found the pain point of, uh, you know, sorting through emails and all of these things and moving on to the solution. I think that those presentations should be heavy on the solution. One of the solutions that you can show that is very, could be very visually um, engaging is that KPIs dashboard. Okay. And like I said, it doesn't have to have real data, but just showing. So uh, let's see the supplemental materials, reports and dashboards, sales management. Uh, I'll look through here and make sure you've gotten enough information on what the service KPIs are. And I can send a link about those. But yeah, I think that that could be like, hey, just so you know, when we deliver our solution, you're going to have a place to see CSAT, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So no, it is not a separate presentation. Um, but yeah, that's my advice on presenting is to be a little bit more solution forward, not so much exposition. Okay. All right, everybody. Um, I hope that helped. You can drop questions about these things in the main channel. I will see them. And uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, it is lovely to see all of your work.